going and attending our Latino field trip. Please meet at the auditorium now. Thank you. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, testing, I wonder if I can pick it up while I'm in my headstand. Better try that. Testing, 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 one, two, three. Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, it kind of interferes with my <laughs> PowerPoint, testing, one, two, three, point support, what is yoga, how does one practice and what are the benefits? Okay, let's see if we're getting sound. Green and then green. Uh, green. Yes, you need just the white one. Okay. And if you want to just give me the. That was the asana, the headstand. And I wanted to use that to introduce you to the idea of yoga. Now, it is a, the reason I think it's important for you to know is that it can keep you youthful for life. My very first teacher, Janet Trinnell, from whom I learned yoga in 1971, said that your, your youth was located in your spine. And if you can keep your spine flexible, that you will be youthful forever. I believed her. <laughs> and I have been practicing yoga for a, for a long time. First of all, I need to tell you that anyone can practice yoga. That <laughs> Anyone can practice yoga, and that it's incredibly good for you. So, Edith, I'm going to hand this to you. Would you just hold this mic as close to me as possible? Come, come up here and follow me around. <laughs> okay, the first thing I want to do today is just kind of stay on this side of me. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is just what about this ancient practice? It's been around for so long. And then I want to talk to you about an actual pose. I'm going to strike a pose or two for you to show you that the, in every pose there's a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And finally, I want to tell you about the benefits of doing yoga for your life. I think it's so fabulous. And finally, okay, what is yoga? How does one practice? And what are the benefits? And then, of course, lifetime is not too long to do yoga. So first of all, where did yoga come from? And I actually went on Wikipedia <laughs> and I found out that it had a really good kind of basic information about what yoga is. But the yogi Swatmarama was the first one who talked about yoga. And the ancient art was to get people ready to meditate. And so you get the body ready for meditation. There have been a lot of um, people who have talked about the benefits of meditation. People like the Maharishi Maheshi Yogi, and they found that if you can be, if you can be uh, calm in your life, even though lots of things happen to you, if you can learn how to calm and to enter.
energize, that you will always have a more successful life. So that comes from several sources. The one that I used and have read a lot is the Maharishi's book. Yoga is also about pranayama or breathing. In every posture, there's the following of the air in and out of the body so that you can, in fact, understand the flow of not only your oxygen, but also the flow of your energy. You take in energy through the palms of your hands and you bring it into your body and you release it. Sometimes in some postures you hold the body in and then you let it go. The uh, sun is prana and apayan is the moon. Now, in order to be good at doing a, a yoga, you have to understand the basic how to do a posture. So like your good speeches, you always have a beginning and you have a middle and then an end. And in the beginning, you prepare your body for going into the posture. And then after you, you execute the posture, you visualize and in the, in the headstand, which I will do slowly for you now and talk you through it. In the headstand, I visualize the sun here and the moon here, and then the moon here and the sun here. And it's, it's constantly changing as I do a headstand. And then finally, I will show you how to come out of the headstand and relax. And one of the things that's hard, especially doing a demonstration, is that if I come out too quickly, I could get lightheaded. So usually I want to keep my head down uh, before I actually come out. So let me just talk you through it. The first thing you do is get ready. And it took me two years to learn to do the headstand. And my children used to hold my feet up to show me <laughs> what, was, what was like balanced, what was uh, straight, because I couldn't tell. So the headstand begins with the hands like this. And then I make a space for my hands. And actually, a lot of my weight is on my arms. But to get ready, you go into this is a modified headstand. Do you want to bring your mic a little closer to me? <laughs> so it's a modified headstand. And then this is the beginning posture. And then usually I can't talk when I get this far. This is the execution. And because I want to bring together my mind, body, spirit, talking is too much the body. <laughs> so, and then this is going out of it. And this is the ending. So every posture, you're so good. Every, <laughs> every posture has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now, one of the things I find, that information I got from my, both of my teachers, Janet Trinnell, and also Charlotte Bell, who teaches here in Salt Lake City. And I just continue to learn from teachers. But what to me is wrong with the new yoga is you don't take time for a beginning, middle, of end of each pose. They go from one pose to another too quickly. And you can't allow your body to adjust. So if you're in a class, they're just moving too fast. So when, when, you find, when you learn yoga, you have to establish your own practice, which is what I do every morning, is I do my own yoga practice. And if I have been taught by my inner teacher, my inner guru, who tells me where, how long I should hold a posture and what I need to do next. So I always listen to my inner teacher because now I know that my inner teacher knows a lot more than anyone else would ever know about my own body and my own connection with my spirit. It is very much a spiritual practice. So finally, these are the benefits. Relaxation and peace of mind. I, there is no way I could have finished a PhD without yoga. <laughs> because when I would get really stressed, if I started my day with a headstand to energize me and a shoulder stand to calm me down, I was ready to go to school. I was ready to, to teach during the day and go to school at night. And I could do it because of yoga. It gives you balance. And as you get older, a sticky mat is really important because a sticky mat keeps your feet from sliding. So when you're doing balance poses, and balance poses have to be done when you're not speaking, <laughs> because it's hard to, to speak and do the poses. So when I'm doing them in the morning, there's no sound. It's just the quiet of the morning. Sometimes I can hear my wind chimes, but that's the most 
that I hear. Balance, circulation gets the blood out of my legs and into my face and my head and my hair. And that's where I need it. I don't need it in my feet. So doing inverted postures like the headstand and the shoulder stand help that. It gives me flexibility, as you can see, for my age. <laughs> I'm incredibly strong and flexible. So that's one of the advantages of yoga, is just the flexibility. And finally, learn while you're young. <laughs> my daughter, I was learning yoga when she was a baby. So 1971, my youngest daughter was born. And so I was learning it as she was growing up. She is my yogini. She's the one in my family who practices yoga because she learned when she was two and when she was three, she was doing postures with me. And so she loves yoga. So if you learn while you're young, you see postures are all a natural phenomenon. Children do them all the time when they're running, when they're playing, they're doing natural yoga. And if you can capture that when you're young, you will be, do yoga until you're old. So the final pose I wanna show you is the queen's pose. The, sh the headstand is the king's pose. Every day I start with the king's pose and then I do the queen's pose. And I'm gonna show you the queen's pose. It's called the shoulder stand. You all could do this one right now. <laughs> Today I could just give you a glimpse into the world of yoga, but I think if you ever get a chance to go to a yoga class and learn a little bit more, I think your body would love it. And I hope you all have a chance to try someday to do some yoga. <laughs>